Stow Children, a skeletal creature of the night, only known to torment the most vulnerable of Hyruleans. Children. During Link's adventure as an adult in Ocarina of Time, Hyrule Field is one of the very few places that could be considered relatively safe. The only real threat are the ghostly hooded spirits known as Poes that roam the field. Of course these creatures are dangerous in their own right, but they are generally only aggressive when startled or approached. But for some reason, there are no more Stow Children. We know that Stow Children only appear in Hyrule Field during Link's younger years, but why? Why do Stow Children only seem to prey on the young and defenceless children of Hyrule? Well first let's look at what a Stow Child is. They appear to be undead skeletal creatures, which continue to survive even after losing their heads, only truly being vanquished after a couple of clean hits. The name Stow Children, or Stow Child, seems to indicate that they are in fact some kind of childlike creature, and given their small-like appearance it doesn't seem completely out of the question. But if Link defeats enough smaller Stow Children, a much larger one will appear. Uh, no, not that one. I mean, that one is pretty large, but let's just shrink that one down a little bit. Too much. A little bigger? A touch more? Perfect. This particular style child is much larger than the previous ones, and it doesn't look like much of a child at all. In fact, it's bigger than most other races in Hyrule, so the name style child doesn't really seem to make much sense. So maybe the name doesn't mean they're children. Maybe the name means they prey on children, which would make a lot of sense given the fact that they only seem to attack child Link and never adult Link. We know Stow children come up from the ground at night and never during the daytime. They seem to be afraid of the sunlight, so it's likely they remain close to the surface at night so they can roam the field before sunrise which sends them scurrying back underground. Now unfortunately, Ocarina of Time doesn't have a whole lot of information on Stow children. But if we zip over to the better, more creepy Zelda title known as Majora's Mask, we can find a lot more information on Stow children, including different types, a place that houses royal skeletal beings, and even dialogue with these monsters. In the far to reach region of Termina lies a land so barren that almost nothing living dwells there. A canyon filled with mainly dead beings, such as Gibdos and a ninja race called the Garrow. Of course we have Pamela's father and his daughter, and this ridiculous thief called Sakon, who clearly has no sense of danger considering he's just running around the land filled with the undead. In fact, how the hell did you even get up here? Anyway, one of the other main beings that live here are none other than our mysterious Stow children. Why? Well I'm about to tell you. A long time ago in Termina, Akana boasted a mighty army, an army to protect the royal family of Akana. At some point an unknown incident sparked a war between the kingdom of Akana and the skillful ninja race known as the Garrow. As I just mentioned, it's unknown who or what started the war but the rivalry was said to be so fierce that the soldiers remained to fight even in death. The war expanded across the whole of Akana, with a great battle taking place in the now known graveyard of Akana, a place that was once defended by many of Akana's soldiers under the command of Captain Kita. Unfortunately, it didn't end too well for Captain Kita and his men, which can be seen when entering the graveyard at night, or approaching the house in the graveyard, and just like the soldiers of Akana continued to fight in death, so do the Garrow. In fact, the war between the Kingdom of Akana still seems to continue to this day, with both the undead soldiers of Akana protecting the land and the Garrow lingering as empty shells and continue to spy on the kingdom. Another thing to mention is the actual castle of Akana, which still, after such a long time, is almost impenetrable and continues to remain the home of the king, Igus to Akana. Now Igus isn't actually a Stow child, but is in fact a Stow foes. Although they have different names, they are technically still the same race. Igus and his two warriors in the throne room, as well as the enemies found in the forest temple in Ocarina of Time, are all Stalfos. The enemies found in Hyrule Field, Akana Graveyard, and Captain Kita himself are all Stal children, so I think it's fair to say they are still related. 
During Link's time in Termina, he is forced to take on the land of Akana, invading the castle and having to fight the king, Igus, and his skillful warriors. Bruh. Upon the defeat of Igus and his men, we can clearly see that these skeletal beings are still very much aware of what is happening around them. Igus continues to lead his men with a firm fist for victory, even in death. But something interesting is that during this cutscene, Igus states that the spell binding that had been cast upon them was broken by the light which we carry. Which seems to be insinuating that they had been killed and cursed back to the land of the living forced to live out their days in the skeletal form of Stal children and Stalfos. On my kingdom, shine the light of justice. These were the king's final words before vanishing, which is likely him finally being allowed to rest in peace. And how is this all relevant to Ocarina of Time, I hear you ask? Well, interestingly enough, prior to the events of Ganondorf, an historic event took place in Hyrule, known as the Hyrulean Civil War. The Hyrulean Civil War refers to the war that occurred prior to the events of Ocarina of Time. Now again, little is known about this conflict, apart from the fact that it lasted for a very long time and many Hyruleans perished. When the war had ended, it resulted in the unification of Hyrule under one banner. Ganondorf swore fealty to the King of Hyrule, placing the Gerudo Desert under Hyrule control. Though, Ganondorf only did so to secure the king's trust, so he could move freely in Hyrule while enacting his plans. Races such as Azora, Gorons, and Kakiri became rare sites in central hubs like Kakariko Village and Castle Town, and many regions were inaccessible without the royal family's permission. The peace was short-lived, however, as some years later, Ganondorf acquired the Triforce of Power, and the conquest of Hyrule began. I think that last part is quite important. The conquest of Hyrule began. During the child section of the game, Ganondorf was slowly moving up the ranks to gain control of Hyrule. He was basically doing evil acts on the sly to stay under the radar from the king. He placed a curse on the Deku Tree, he infested Dodongo's cavern, funny enough with Dodongo's, before sealing the entrance shut with a boulder. And he cursed our boy Jabu Jabu too, which is extremely unforgivable. So we can clearly see Ganondorf's actions affecting every area of Hyrule as early as Link's talk with the Deku Tree. Every area except Hyrule Field, which for some reason is infested with Stow children. It's heavily implied that Stow children are the corpses of Hyrulean soldiers who died during the Civil War and were reanimated with dark magic. If this is to be true, this could explain why Stow children are actively in the field and attacking innocents passing through the field at night. Let me explain. In Majora's Mask, Igos and his soldiers were reanimated by some kind of magic after the deadly war when many lives were lost. It's more than likely that the same thing happened with the Stow children in Hyrule Field, reanimated with some kind of dark magic by none other than Ganondorf. As I stated before, Ganondorf was making moves early on in Ocarina of Time, and Hyrule Field was a very powerful position to hold. Ganondorf took control of the field by bringing back fallen Hyrulean soldiers as Stow children. The only problem is they can only emerge at night due to the light breaking any form of dark magic, which we see when the sun rises and the Stow children flee. Because Hyrule Field was dangerous at night, many would avoid it and travel only by day, which is perfect for the King of Darkness, who could use the cover of night and the threat of the Stow children to move through Hyrule undetected. But a big question still remains. When Link returns seven years later as an adult, where the heck did they go? Well, when Link does return, Ganondorf is already in control of Hyrule and has the Triforce of Power. Hyrule Field is already being avoided by the other races in Hyrule. The Kakiri were trapped in their houses, the Gorons had been imprisoned, and the Zora had been frozen. Heck, even the Gerudo were stuck in the desert. It really wasn't necessary for the Stow children to remain in Hyrule Field anymore, so it seems Ganondorf either ended the curse or moved them on to a different place. The Lost Woods would be the obvious choice given the fact that the Forest Temple is the home to many Stalfos, as is the Shadow Temple, the Spirit Temple, the Gerudo Training Grounds, and Ganon's Castle. But what do you think? Was it Ganondorf all along that cursed the corpses of dead Hyruleans from the Civil War and used them as weapons? 
or was it something entirely different? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then consider subscribing for more Zelda content. I've been Zell Rando, and thanks for watching.